Hello everyone, welcome back to Military Plus. In December 2017, Norway announced it would purchase 24 K9 Thunder self-propelled howitzers from South Korean firm Hanwha for $215 million, with an option for up to 24 more in the future. The K9 edged out in a graded M109 howitzer offered by the Swiss firm Ruig and the German Panzerhavid C2000, which has a similar main gun and performance profile, but a slightly faster rapid fire rate compared to the K9. However, the PZH-2000 is considerably more expensive. This marks just the latest success of the South Korean howitzer system, which is already serving with Turkey and will soon enter service with three other NATO countries, as well as India and Finland. South Korea itself will have more than 1,200 of these guns deployed by 2019 to face down their intimidating North Korean counterparts along the mountainous demilitarized zones that separate the two states. The turret on the 52-ton K9 mounts a huge 155mm howitzer with a long 52 caliber barrel that can strike targets up to 26 miles away or as far as 35 miles using rocket-assisted projectiles. The vehicle's five-man crew is fully enclosed with protection from ambient nuclear, biological, and chemical hazards and protected by 19 millimeters of steel armor, just enough to deflect heavy machine gun rounds and trap but not anything heavier. A 50 caliber machine gun on the turret offers a modicum of air and close defense capability. South Korea designed the K-9 to operate on the rugged mountains of the demilitarized zone with North Korea and accordingly gave it advanced hydropneumatic suspension to overcome the rocky terrain. Despite weighing more than the US-built M109 Paladin, which has been in widespread use across the globe since the 1960s, the K-9 is faster at 41 miles per hour, has a higher power-to-weight ratio thanks to its 1,000-horsepower engine, and has a nearly 40% greater operational range of 300 miles before requiring refueling. While the gun isn't stable enough to be fired on the move, it can be deployed for firing in just one minute. The gun uses an automatic feed mechanism to reduce the burden on the two loaders in the crew. It is capable of rapid-firing three rounds in just 15 seconds using its multiple-round simultaneous impact mode, allowing a modernized version of a World War II tactic known as Time on Target. Operational research has shown that artillery is deadliest during the opening moments of barrage, when the targets are likely out in the open and unaware of the incoming attack then declines steeply in effectiveness as adversaries hunker down into cover. By timing the shells in an opening salvo to land simultaneously before the enemy is aware they are incoming, they are likely to inflict far greater damage. The Thunder can carry up to 48 shells and is resupplied by K-10 ammunition resupply vehicles, which can transfer up to 104 more rounds via an automated bridge that does not require the crew to expose themselves to fire. The K-10 uses the same hull as the K-9 for maintenance commonality. The Thunder's mobility, fast deployment time, and MRSI capability make it well-suited for delivering brief but deadly fires and then rapidly redeploying to new firing positions to avoid retaliatory counter-battery fire. The K-9 actually first saw action with the Turkish army in the form of a license-built variant called the T-155 Fertina Storm. The Fertinas were first employed in a cross-border incursion targeting Iraqi Kurdish PKK forces in 2007 and later were heavily engaged in attacks on Kurdish and ISIS forces across Turkey's border with Syria. However, ISIS fighters filmed themselves knocking out three Fertinas at Gaziantep using Medi's wire-guided anti-tank missiles in April 2016. Turkey currently possesses at least 300 T-155s and has exported 36 to Azerbaijan, where they may see use in its on-and-off-again war with Armenia. South Korea's K-9s saw their own baptism by fire under less than auspicious circumstances on the afternoon of November 23, 2010 at Yeonpyeong Island at the extreme western tip of the north-south border. 
Apparently feeling provoked by a South Korean naval exercise earlier in the morning, North Korean artillery based in the Kimori Peninsula and on the tiny island of Muto began an indiscriminate hour-long bombardment of Yeonpyeong Island, killing two civilians and two Korean Marines, and wounding 22 more. Countries in Northern and Eastern Europe are also seeking to improve their artillery capabilities due to Russia's more aggressive posture in the region. Even Estonia, with its tiny population of 1.2 million, is planning to acquire 12 funders by 2021 to increase the costs of a hypothetical Russian invasion. Poland, meanwhile, is even building a domestic version of the K-9 called the AHS Crab, which uses the turret of a British as 90M Braveheart howitzer. Warsaw plans to have five regiments totaling 120 crabs, of which one is already operational. Further north, Finland announced in February 2017 that it was acquiring 48 used funders. And far away in India, 100K9 Vajra TS optimized for desert environments will be domestically manufactured with an option for 50 more, replacing outdated and smaller caliber Abbott and II's one self-propelled howitzers. The Vajras are the first modern addition to India's undersized self-propelled artillery force. The U.S. military has placed decreasing importance on artillery until recently, as armored howitzer systems are heavy and difficult to deploy and resupply across the globe into an active theater. But for countries facing potential adversaries on their borders, artillery can respond much more rapidly, sustainably, and cheaply than air power. Improvements in technology now allow greater range and accuracy than before. This, combined with relatively affordable price, may explain why the advanced Korean howitzer is experiencing a surge in popularity.